Right here, by command of the doggies at 827, the signal tower personnel on Midway Island, for little Virginia Irving over there in Liverpool, for a gang of water tenders in the Atlantic, for Rocky and Ed and the North African hotshots, the engineers in Algeria, for Jack Stewart and the RAF in southern Rhodesia, and for Lieutenant A.S. Blodgett, Jr., Command Performance proudly presents a famous daughter of one of our first families of the American stage, Cornelia Otis Skinner. The scene, an American living room. Cornelia Otis Skinner, as mother, has been cornered by her son, aged 12, who's having homework trouble. And overwhelmed by the injustice of having been brought into a world of mathematics, Junior has placed the whole discouraging matter squarely in Mother's lap. What is it, Junior? An arithmetic problem? All right, I'd love to. Here, come sit on the arm of Mother's chair. Mother just loves to help her little boy. Now then, which is it? Number nine? Let's see. Three boys, A, B, and C, were playing at marbles when they were marked by the and the with the and the how many marbles did each boy have? Well, darling, that's very simple. You see, all you have to do... Yes, all you have to do... <laughs> all right. Now, we'll read this through carefully, and you listen. <laughs> Three boys, A, B, and C, were... Junior, turn that way a minute. I wish you could see behind your ears. Uh, do you play games, dear, in which you put your ears to the ground? Uh, now then, three boys, A, B, and C, were playing at marbles. They were playing at marbles. When A remarked that if B gave him one of his marbles, B would have twice as many as A then had. Well, that was nice. <laughs> B remarked that if C gave him three of his marbles, C would have twice as many as B had. You see, that's the same thing A said. No, it, it isn't. Well, it's practically the same thing. A then remarked that if B gave him seven of his marbles, the number that A would have would lack three of being half as many as C would have left. <laughs> How many marbles did each boy have? <clears throat> Well, darling, what you do is you add. <laughs> I mean, multiply. I don't know. Maybe we'd better divide. Three boys, A, B, and C, were playing at marbles. When... Junior, don't do that. Can't you remember to use your handkerchief? <laughs> Go get Mother's button basket over there. That's it. Now, these buttons are marbles. Because I say so. <laughs> I'm A. Here, give me your hand. You're B, and here's C over here. Now, you give me one marble. Any will do, Junior. Now, you've got twice as many as I have. I don't know how many I have, but you've got twice as many. <laughs> I don't know how many marbles there are. There are X marbles. X is the marble... Junior, don't argue with me. I remember perfectly. It's all coming back to me. We spent years and years in school letting X equal something. <laughs> well, it's an expression, let X. Like let go. <laughs> I can't help it if Miss Meebles has you do it a different way. Mine is the old-fashioned method, and I know it's right. Now then, C gives you three marbles, and you give me one. I'm A. Did you take three from C? Well, take three from C. <laughs> Junior, do you have to make that noise? That queer bubbling noise. <laughs> well, please stop. It's very unattractive. And Junior, if you don't stop kicking this table, I am going to do this wrong on purpose to punish you. <laughs> Please pay attention. A then remarked that if C gave him seven of his marbles, the number that A would have would lack three of being half as many as C would have left of all the fool things for a boy to remark when he's playing marbles. <laughs> Junior, I don't see why you don't try to use a little more gumption and work this out for yourself. Of course I can do it, but I think you ought to. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think I can do it. 
I see you gave me one, he gave me three, multiply that to subtract, and uh, uh, 15, and uh, subtract equals zero. There's the answer to the problem. The answer is zero. I don't know what the question was, but the answer is zero. <laughs> Dearie, the question was, how many marbles did each boy have? Oh. Junior, you tell Miss Meebles for me that that's a perfectly stupid arithmetic problem and one that would fit you in no way for future life. I can't do this with you in the room. You're going up to bed. Go on, hurry, dear. Penny Packer, 1525. I'll be up. I'll be up when I've got a better answer. Hello, is this the racket club? I want to speak to Mr. Marshall. This is Mrs. Marshall. Hello, George. Hello, darling. George, wait a minute. Junior, go in your room and shut the door. <laughs> George, Junior just came to me with an arithmetic problem, and I can't do it. Now, I'll read it to you quickly. It, it's terrible. Three boys, A, B, and C, were playing at marbles when A remarked that if B gave him one of his marbles, B would have twice as many as A then had. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. B remarked that if C gave him three of his marbles, C would have twice as many as B had. Well, wait till you hear what A said. <laughs> then remarked that if C gave him seven of his marbles, the number that A would have would lack three of being half as many as C would have left. The idea being to find out how many marbles each boy had, if you can. No, he gave him one. Who gave who what? <laughs> oh, he, he gave him seven. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah, I see. Mm-hmm. Divide by I see. And C had 19. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, I understood perfectly. All right, darling. Goodbye. Oh, George, how many did A have? I see. All right. Goodbye, dear. Now then, Junior. Mother's worked this all out for you. Thank you, Cornelia Otis Skinner. Well, gang, for a long time we've been feeding vitamin pills to a group of old-timers to get them in shape to play some of that wonderful music known as Dixieland. Back in 1900, Grandma and Grandpappy down in New Orleans were cutting the rug on this kind of music. By uh, 1917, they called it jazz and were really sweating it out. Anyway, we've got eight of the nation's great exponents of Dixieland, all with the rheumatism. You asked for this, so you got nobody to blame but yourselves. Fellas, a touch of American swing when it wore diapers and those royal garden blues. Thank <laughs> you. 